Hello and welcome. I'm going to do a little picture today which is a combination of two photographs that I took from Friendsbeck Nature Reserve. So one of them was this little bird box and the other one was this um, these uh, florals basically. So I will put a link to both of those um, photographs in the description below in case you want to have a little look at them and you have my permission to use them. Um, I will also put a link to this sketch in case you feel that this is a little bit complicated. If I bring it up, it's really not that complicated, but um, I've sketched that out ready and I'm going to start. Um, I've pulled out two brushes one of which I haven't used before because it's still got the cap on. Um, I'm going to use my Princeton Snap size zero for the small details. And I've got an Escoda Perla size eight for the rest. I think that will probably do us. The uh, paper that I'm using is from this Hanamule selection and it's number four which is the Turner 300 GSM, 100% cotton rag, cold pressed. So um, that's the one that I'm using from this um, selection of watercolour papers. So I'm going to move that out of the way. And I've got a palette here that I was using for something else, but that's fine. Um, I did use this Faber-Castell mechanical pencil it's a 0.5 to do my sketch and I used this Tombow Mono Zero eraser um, you can re refill the erasers inside um, but I liked it because it had got a very small point for um, me to erase small details so that's what I've used already and we'll pop them to one side. I'm going to bring in my uh, Daniel Smith um, paints if I can get them on the screen. I think we can just about. There we go. What you won't see off to the side is my water, but I don't think that that's too important not to be able to see the water and my rag that I was using. So I'm going to start by putting in some background and I want some um, blue for the sky and you can use whatever blue you like. I'm just going to be using up this that's on my, it's kind of a grey blue. Um, I think it was a mixture of warm white and neutral tint in actual fact but it's a kind of a grey blue so we're going to make a start by putting a little bit of a grey kind of sky in to give ourselves a bit of a horizon I'm going to be desperately trying to paint round my pencil marks without getting my head in the shot which as we all know it's quite a feat for me. So there we go. So you can just take your time doing this bit. So 
And then where's my gap? So that's a tree, that's a tree, and they're just grasses. So it can be quite tricky. And I don't mind going over the pencil marks for the grasses, that's okay. Or the little twiggy bits, whatever we want to call them. So there we go, we've got a little bit of a horizon line and a bit of a grey blue sky going on. Now the next bit is going to be tricky because we're going to have to paint around everything and I want to get a green in as our background. Um, let's go with this one. And we can kind of gradually, gradually change it. So this is one of those paintings where you've got to very carefully go around everything as best you can. And you'll notice I'm not always picking up paint. Sometimes I'm just picking up water. and letting the paint spread. So what I might do, because I think you're getting the idea of this, is perhaps pause while I finish going around everything and come back to you when I've done that. Okay, so once I'd filled in all the gaps, I'm just adding some perylene green. You can use whatever greens you like. You don't have to use my greens. This is just, you know, something to, to play with, but, um, yeah, I just wanted to add some, some interest going up here. So there we go. Um, this is what we are looking at the moment. So I've kind of varied my, varied my greens a little bit so that they are you know, says that it's not all one colour. And I quite like what's gone on up there. That's kind of like some little bush or something going on in the background there. So I'm going to leave that. Um, but obviously I want this to dry before moving on. So back in a tick. Okay, that is now dry. So I'm going to get my trees in. And for my trees I am going to use some sepia I'm just gonna blink it on here um, I'm just gonna add a little bit of this blue that was already on my palette because that then helps us to pull everything together and we're going to get this tree in now what I might do is move it down and then move it back up again so that I can reach a little bit better We're just getting our 
I'm a tree in. So these are quite muted colours, really. Let me move that up now that I've... And then what I'm going to do, because my light's kind of coming this way, I'm going to make this tree slightly darker. So we're going to have more of the um, sepia in it. I'm still mixing in a little bit of my neutral tint and warm white so that it's all still cohesive. And there's not that much colour difference, but you can see that there definitely is some. I'll go even darker at the bottom there, I think. So, there we have those. Oh, we mustn't forget our little branch at the top here. Obviously, I wouldn't normally have done my my sketching lines so dark, but um, they just don't show up otherwise for you. So there we go. We've got our tree in now. And I think then I'm going to, maybe I do need a size two. There we go. I've got a size two round now. And I want to um, get some of these uh, leaves in. So um, I want these to kind of stand out a bit more. So I'm using the Caroline Green because these are, these are at the forefront of our painting. And the way that I can get variation is by adding more or less water. And I will do the stems in a moment. But first of all, I'm going to get these leaves in. And I'm just using my pencil marks as um, rough guides, really, at this moment in time. As I go up and we're coming more towards the light, 
I'm going to add in a bit of the moss green so is that my leaves start to change colour but I've still still got the perylene green in there And there we go. I'm just going between my perylene green and my mix of moss green and perylene green. And we're just going to get all of these leaves in like so. And then I want to add some of my sepia to that mixture for these little seedy head things at the bottom here. Okay, and then we need to get the pinks in and that's the bit that I really want to pop so I'm going to use my Scarlet Lake And I think I use a bit of the warm white in there as well. Oh, I've made my warm white pink now. Never mind. Just so that it it's got this lovely kind of corally effect. And I'm so that I can do these flowers. I'm just going to move it down a tad. And I'm not going to do all of them like this in this colour. I'm going to change it slightly and I'm not really I mean I know I drew the little circles but I'm not I'm not really following that I'm kind of going over the top it was just so that I'd got an idea of what I was doing really. I'm going to add a bit more of the Scarlet Lake in so that these aren't all one colour. So we've got our little pink flowers now let's let's add a bit more scarlet lake and get some just some darker ones in as well so that there is variation Oh, 
Actually, it's easier to just do blobs. There we go. So you can just do blobs. And a little size to brush like so. And then we have our little flowers going on. While all of that is drying, we can do our bird box. And for our bird box, I'm going to take the, uh, no, that's, Yes, that is the right one. I'm going to take my sepia. I'm going to warm it up a little bit with um, this green. I'd, I'd, I'd got um, yellow ochre in. So I'm just going to warm it up a little bit. Maybe even add a bit of the red in. There we go. Um, and I'm going to use my smaller brush, I think. So I'm just going to pop that down a bit so that I can paint this in. And we'll get that bit round there. And then I want some darker bits. So I'm going to go back into my um, sepia. Couldn't think of the name of it for a minute. And get some of these. details in and just let them merge a bit so that we can see that there's something going on there and I'm just going to wipe that out a bit and then I can maybe get that a bit darker later on. So we've got our little bird box there. Let's just dry that off, see where we are and see what we need to do next. Okay, so we need to um, define some things a little bit more. And so when we do um, pen and wash, we can either do the pen first and then the wash, the wash being the watercolour paint, or we can do it the other way around. And today I'm going to be doing it the other way around. So um, I'm going to be using this Elegant Writer. It's a two millimetre and I'm going to be adding my outlines to everything and because this is water soluble I'm hoping to be able to do some other quite fun things with it So I've just started off by outlining my tree. I'm now going to do the bird box.
I want to get that to show that that's the where the birdies go in. Okay, now I'm going to do the lines that connect all of these. So where all the leaves come off. And we've got this one coming down here. And then we've got this one coming off there. And we've got one here. Like so. Now I'm at the bottom, I can get these in a bit better. Like that. And I'm going to go around all my leaves and not particularly carefully so no need to be precious about it we're just Doing the shape of a leaf. Have I missed any? No, I don't think so. So now we've got some nice outlines going on there. And I'm... Um, what I want to do is get some of these grass or twiggy bits in and they can be overlapping everything and we've got some more coming across here We've got one coming across there. So you can just find the lines as long as you've used fairly transparent watercolours, you should easily be able to find them again. And you can, of course, add a few more in and even go right up. Now, because this is water soluble, I am hoping that I will be able Yes, to just go over some of these and again, not carefully, just 
coming over those leaves and even I'm hoping that you'll be able to see this I'm going just with a damp damp brush I'm going over these lines that I've made and I'm hoping that we will see some really pretty things going on so we can just And it definitely does work. And we can just pull them up so that we've got some extra detail. What I might do also is make these little pods a little bit more interesting by going over them with this elegant writer and then just allowing those to smudge a bit now this elegant writer kind of goes bluey pinky greeny um, it's really really interesting um, what happens with um, the elegant writer once you've added and I'm going to use the fact that that will be water soluble to just add a bit more detail on my bird box, on my birdie box. So if I bring this up, you will see that it's starting to change to various different, um, various different colours. Um, I'm also going to help it to smudge a bit down the edge of my trees and then just with a damp damp brush just um, stop that from being a, 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 a hard line that's what I was looking for so we can go down the lines and get this really nice effect just by allowing the elegant writer to smudge what do we need next well Obviously, we need splats, don't we? We can't have a painting without splats. I'm just going to hold my painting up a little bit. Just to get some of those little splats in. Like so. Not gone berserk. And then all that we need to do is take our washi tape off. So I will do that and then hold it up. But I think that that is something a little bit different. Um, 
using that elegant writer at the end gives us from something that was quite um, rigid and um, sketched out it then gives us this this picture that is has got some looseness to it a little bit of looseness to it so there we go something a little bit um different and maybe with those reference pictures and the sketch that i'm going to put below it might be something that you want to have a little play with um i think the elegant writers are great fun i might try just using an elegant writer another time so little bird box and some lovely little um uh, flowers there i know not what they are <laughs> but um you'll see them on the on the photograph on the link below as always stay safe stay healthy stay calm until i see you next time thank you so much for watching <laughs>